Okay, uh, on to exciting new things. We're going to look at Canton Mapper in Touch Designer. We're going to uh, start doing some projection mapping. Uh, so have set up here a simple projection scene. I've got some boards, uh, some tape, ruler. Uh, so we're going to go through the steps to create our mappings uh, and then fill those mappings with our own custom video content. Uh, so my my system I have going uh, here to actually kind of film all this, I've, so I've got a, a my iPhone uh, kind of here on the table that's uh, getting this scene. I'm, I'm getting that um, that signal in via NDI, which will be the topic of a future uh, demo. Um, so I'll, I'll be showing this kind of iPhone feed to see the scene. Uh, and then this Canton map review is what we're going to be doing all, all these mappings in. Um, so we can kind of see off the bat, just to see how the kind of um, how the projector and the objects are set up. Let's just let me grab this and turn that output off. And let's just turn on a solid blue scene here. Uh, okay, so here here's the uh, iPhone feed. We can see very rickety. Projection, uh, projection set set up right there, um, just on a table. So it's quite small, um, but it's got enough variation. So the the key to this really is just to kind of position the projector in such a way, so the full projection image is basically covering all of the parts that I, I might want to map. Uh, so, so that's obviously going to be the the bounds of your your mapping. Um, also, just knowing what your native projector resolution is is important. Uh, so for this projector uh, projector in particular, it's sixteen by nine is its native aspect. Uh, so or sixteen by ten, I should say. Sorry. Uh, so I could make it. You know, I could make it sixteen by nine, but then I'm kind of throwing away some pixels at the top and bottom. Um, so I, I went ahead and. and made an image in touch designer that's 1280 by 800 uh, which is 16 by uh, by 10 so if we kind of see there we go so in Canton uh, we can set that resolution uh, so that is just you know being aware of the settings uh, of what you're the projector you're using going into the menu in the projector making sure that it's kind of lining up to what your resolution in touch designer is so let's kind of put this back okay let's see if that falls over um all right so let's let's start here just to kind of show what i did and then we can uh, do this again from scratch uh so i guess first of all you know, if we uh, look up here in the palette, um, there's a mapping category now. So there's quite a few kind of nice uh, tools for mapping. Um, I mean, the, the easiest would really be something like, um, you know, stoners is also pretty easy. Um, simplest one would just be a corner pin uh, top. So this is just giving you the capability to, to move those four corners of a rectangular uh, texture. Um, it won't allow you to do like the more intricate uh, freeform masks, but if all you want to do is kind of map something to a rectangular projection surface, corner pin does it super easy. Um, so grabbing Canton Mapper here, we just kind of grab it, drag it onto our network. Um, I'll go ahead and just open up the one I've already been working on here. So we hit uh, P for parameters. Uh, and so for a lot of components, you know, we'll kind of dive in and you see all this other stuff inside. We don't need to deal with this inside at all. Um, so doing all of our mapping, it's solely, you know, clicking on it, hitting P for the parameters. And then uh, here we see open content window. And that just kind of plopped over there on my other monitor. Okay. Uh, this is where all the action happens right here. So we don't have to actually go into the component. Um, also, I should say you, you must have a separate obviously you need a projector to do projection mapping, duh. Um, but you, you need to have the displays um, extended, right? So they, they cannot be mirrored or, or in other words, duplicated, uh, depending on if you're on PC or Mac. Uh, so these are separate displays. Uh, and 
uh, I've got my control screen here on this, on this iMac, and then the 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 map to display is going out the projection. Uh, so here we see. Let me just kind of get these things nice and big. Uh, so off the bat, resolution. So manually, I made this um, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so that matches the projector. Uh, let's look at window options. Uh, so in its guts is essentially a window comp, which is uh, th that's what the perform window is. Uh, it's just a window comp with a certain settings. Um, so we're, we're not actually doing perform mode where it's kind of going through this content mapper window comp. Um, we don't need to change any of this. Monitor uh, is what we'll have to change depending on how this is set up. So I have my projector kind of over to the left arranged. So if we go actually over to my uh, preferences, displays, and arrangement. Uh, here is my um, projector. And I've got my, my main iMac screen uh, kind of shrunk down. It's easier to read the text. Uh, so just by default, because that's on the left, uh, the projector became monitor 0. Um, and then, in this case, monitor 1 would be uh, my iMac. So I want to make sure the map's content goes out monitor 0. Uh, and then oftentimes, you know, opening size will usually be automatic. Uh, let's go ahead and tell that to fill. Uh, and in this case, borders uh, usually is already off, um, but just make sure that's off uh, or else it'll have the kind of menu bar on the top, which we don't want. Uh, and we really, we don't need to really, for the basics, we don't need to worry about any of these other settings. Um, and then toggle op output will turn it on. So we can kind of see, uh, so I have my just kind of normal screen right now. If I hit toggle output, boom, that's the content mapper output now. So super easy, I can turn that on or off. Beautiful. Um, so I have all of these shapes here that I created. Uh, and it's it's just as simple as clicking on a shape and then drawing a little quad or free form around it. So here we can kind of see, actually, let me move this maybe right here. So let's, let's play around really quick with this red shape. Uh, and I've got it labeled as front board, uh, but we can just click on this edge here and look at that. So just by I'm, I'm clicking it inside the Canton Mapper interface, and then I can see this in like the real world, the, the quote unquote real world. Uh, and then here we can see it for, uh, coming in from my iPhone. Uh, so it's really becomes this uh, really fun um, activity of like matching up pixels with. Uh, physical reality. So you can kind of just click it with the mouse. So you know, usually we have um, so these tools right here. I kind of zoom in a little bit more. So by default, we'll see, and this is giving me a bug too right now to see these labels. Uh, but this is the uh, key transformer or uh, key selector. Uh, so I can click that, move that around with the mouse. Or with that uh, key selected, I can just click my keyboard, up, down, left, right, and that'll move it in smaller increments. So then you kind of just line it up, right? And you get a little negotiation with, with the edges there. Um, and that's that. Um, the cool thing with this is, uh, you know, for instance, like the, the main board we see, um, I was able to just create a single rectangular shape uh, and depending on the layering here it will kind of go behind or in front of the other shape so you, you don't have to create uh, these really intricate kind of overlaying shapes um, so this is kind of opposite um, what a um, what you might think like a Photoshop stacking order is so we can see wall which is the this blue thing here is on the top of this stack Main board is the green one. Front board is the, the reddish one, so on and so forth. So like in this stacking order, whatever is on top actually recedes behind um, the other things. Uh, so it's almost like, um, like in processing, as you kind of write shapes in, in the code and processing, uh, what things come, that come after end up getting drawn on top. Uh, so if I did something like, right, so front board, if I drag this, moved it above main board, now we kind of see both here and also in our 
real scenario. I kind of went behind that now. Um, so that makes life easier that you can just kind of rearrange things like that. Um, for So let's just go back into the, the brand new content mapper and let's recreate some of these from scratch. Um, just kind of see how it works. Uh, especially these, these circular ones are a little bit harder, but still um, fairly easy. Uh, Kantan in Japanese means easy. So I guess that's that's easy. Uh, so let's let's just make that a little bit bigger. Okay, let's just start. Let's turn this output off. Bring this back. Toggle output. Okay, and let's open up this one. Do it all over so it always pops open on that screen. Okay, so we start with. Nothing. Uh, I'm going to go in and kind of do these settings, like I just said, 1280 uh, by 800. Window options, let's go to monitor zero, fill, all that's fine. And let's go ahead and toggle. Okay, there we go. So there, there's just a black screen happening. Uh, and we can see my, my projectors. I mean, the lighting is not ideal here, it's not, not so dark. And my projector is quite old, so it, even on the black, it, it kind of sends a kind of gray, video gray signal. Uh, first shape, it's as easy as clicking one of these tools. So uh, let's just create quad, or over here we can create freeform. And this is select shape, and that's select keys and handles. So let's create a quad, click that, and then just click drag anywhere to your heart's content. And I guess as I do this, let me open up this window so we can see these side by side. So I'll put that right there. We can kind of see it. And then the text and content might be a little bit hard to read here, but let's hopefully it's fine. Okay. So uh, we can see as I made this quad, uh, it is now showing up on the projection. Um, by default, it has just a solid color, so, so it, you know, it'll it randomly pick a color. You know, you could um, go ahead and select some other color there if you wanted to. So nice and yellow, we can go ahead and give it another name. Whatever, yellow rect. Um, but what I like to do, uh, you know, doing the solid colors here that's kind of built in is nice. Um, but I know that I'm, I'm going to end up using other tops. So here I, I already kind of planned um, just some simple constant tops uh, going into nulls, which I renamed map one, map two, so on and so forth. Um, so let's go ahead and apply this texture uh, to our mapping. And to do that, so let's see here in my mapping I just created, this field right here called texture is uh, what we need to look at. Uh, so that is going to reference some top out there. So we can drag, let's say map one onto this texture field. There we go. So it has an absolute path there, project one, map one. And so it's still not showing up. We need to, so this is slightly counterintuitive. Like it looks like a little X, like it's disabling something, but actually we click on this little X and that actually enabled that texture to be displayed uh, in our mapping. Uh, so actually I'm gonna rename this again. So I'm gonna do what I did before. So front board, because that's where I'm going to put it. And then from now, Here's the fun part. We just click each. Actually, let's go. I need a little more room here. This is like rearranging your furniture in your living room or something. All the windows. So you kind of get it in a rough spot. And then we can follow up with the keyboard taps. And we're just going to do it pretty rough for now, but you get the picture. So, you know, usually as I'm doing this, uh, so we can see this little corner 
uh, you can see you know on the the image right here it's kind of going a little bit too far uh, so it's it really shows up a lot uh, when it is kind of going beyond the object uh, so I find it's a little bit better to err on the side of being a little bit in there so it's that's looking pretty good so this is all just going to be a negotiation with all the different shapes and on this other side so this is also kind of nice one if you're like working with other people because I can't even really see the other side of his board right now but it's fine for now okay tap 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 okay click and then that looks pretty cool um, so all the other shapes, let's just say I'll do the I'll do the backboard and we can um, um, show how this layering works really quick too. So I'll just create another quad. I'll just do this really quick, and I'll line that up to the main board. Okay, that's fine. Close enough. Okay, and up a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the textures. I'll make that some of the color. Let's say I'll just. It's arbitrary, but I'll just do map four for that for now. So drag it to the texture field, hit the little X to enable it. Uh, and then uh, change the stacking order. Or maybe I'll rename this too. So main boards. And I want that to be behind it. So drag it like so. And that looks pretty good. So obviously then you kind of like really tweak this this edge as much as you want. You could spend a lot of time on those tiny details. Um, so that the quads, that's it. Super easy. Um, these other shapes, um, if you had you know something that had you know more than four vertices that had a, more of a uh, uh, higher count polygonal shape. Uh, instead of hitting create quad, we could create freeform, and then you just kind of click to your heart's content, right? And then it like pops up like that. Um, to do this circular shape, that's pretty much what uh, what we did. I'm going to delete that. Uh, I just created a, I mean, really, because for a circle, I'm really only using four, uh, four vertices or four keys also. So I could start with a quad, whatever. Um, but I, I'm going to start with a freeform here and just kind of roughly go ahead and just click it. I'm going to try to get the outside edge. You can kind of see I'm kind of getting... kind of outside points and then when you go back to the first one it completes it and let's so before I did this yellow right let's go ahead and just keep that yellow so texture click okay so now I need to do a little extra uh, work with this so I'm gonna you know try to tweak this so it's right on the edges there And that's looking pretty good. Let me a little bit lower. OK. Uh, we can add a little, um, you know, similar to what we do like with the pen tool in uh, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, we can add a Bezier curve to these. Uh, so we, we change our tool. So usually we would have key and handle transform, insert key, convert key. Uh, and this kind of my labels are kind of bugging out here. Uh, but this third little triangle um, icon is convert key is what it says. So when I click that, uh, now when I click on this thing, it gives me my you know, Bezier curve handles. So this, you know, this is a little bit finicky. It takes a little work. You're going to have to um, really try to get the 
curve accurate. Oops. Uh, but this is how you do it, right? So the other, other side, I'm kind of bleeding over too much, but for now, I don't really care too much. Let's, okay, so I made that. And then we can go back to um, handle transform. So I, I converted the key, so now they have these handles. I can go back to my key and handle transform, and this is where I can just click individual handles and try to get that to a place where it looks fine. And so let's just pretend like that is good enough. And this I'm not quite getting on this edge, but yeah, looks fine. I mean, there's a little little bleeding right there. Uh, so this this has created a whole circle. Now, thinking about something like Illustrator, we can use the Pathfinder. Let's say I could uh, kind of erase a part of this mask, uh, part of this mapping, uh, so that only the surface of my tape roll is is yellow. Uh, a different way I could do that is just create another circle inside of it that's layered on top. So let's just do that. I'm going to actually let's rename this uh, tape outside ring. Oops. And unfortunately, there's not an easy way to just copy this and paste it. Uh, there, there should be, I guess. If there is, please inform me, anyone. Um, so let's just do another. Let's do another freeform. And I'm going to click again, roughly on the inside of this now. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this in front of that one. Beautiful. And so I'll make this purple. Okay, uh, and then same story. So let's go ahead. Let's get this roughly in place. And you can't even see this, but... It's kind of fun where like you know we're so used to just sitting and then looking at our screen. So this makes you kind of be more aware of the physical space in a kind of fun way. Uh, okay, so again, uh, let's click on this little triangle, convert key, and let's get some handles for all of these. Do that right. Okay, and that's far from perfect, but for our purposes, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so, okay, that looks that looks pretty great. 